Hey everyone, Lou here. As it's the Halloween season, what better way to celebrate the Halloween season than to talk about horror games? Today, I'll be talking about Misao. After making a video about Mad Father and the Witch's House some years ago, Misao was another highly requested video. So, let's go. <laughs> Misao is an RPG horror game created by Sen, released in May 2011. Though an English translation would not be made until two years later in 2013, which finally propelled the game into popularity. Unlike Sen's other game, which is a canonical prequel, Mad Father, Misao has gone under multiple different updates. From my observation, I guess Sen never felt happy with the outcome of Misao because it was his first game, so a lot of mistakes were made. In 2017, Playism would purchase many freeware RPG horror games and put up heavily updated versions for Steam, and Misao was one of them, which is the one I'll be reviewing today. Though if you don't want to buy the game, the much older free version is available on VG Person's website who translated the game themselves. Though please keep in mind that many endings, graphics, and events are not available in the free version. Then again, it's $5.00 and it's kind of worth it as I explain this review. Alrighty then, let's start with the story. Our main character for this game is Aki, a standard, typical, cutesy, upbeat, optimistic high school girl with cutesy pigtails who although looks adorable in the original version, her cuteness is just amped up in the remake where she just looks like the cutest thing on the planet. Misao is a girl in Aki's class who went missing three months ago. Aki and Misao were never really friends and only met each other once, but Aki really liked Misao and hoped to be friends with her, but they never did. No one ever went looking for Misao when she went missing, as students, teachers, and her own parents believe she simply ran away from home because... reasons? Three months after Misao disappeared, students started joking about her death and potentially being vengeful. Aki hears Misao calling to her and begging for her to help just as an earthquake hits the school and transports a select few students to an alternate dimension where ghosts and monsters live. Aki pretty much wakes up alone and discovers literally everything in the school trying to kill her when she meets Onigawara. Wait a minute. This guy looks familiar. Haven't we seen him somewhere before on this channel? I know! I can't believe Sen just ripped off Sebastian's wig. The nerve of it all. I'm just kidding around. This is Ogre from Sen's other game, Mad Father. To make things simple, I'm calling him Ogre for this video because his name is slightly difficult to pronounce and frankly, I don't care for his name in this game. Anyway, let's continue. As you go around the school solving puzzles, which I'll discuss further in the gameplay, you discover that all these people caused Misao's eventual death, except for Ayaka. I guess she was kinda an accident to be there, maybe? All of them relentlessly bullied Misao and even played with her emotions to a point where it ultimately caused her end. Due to this, all of them start dying in pretty gruesome ways, one of which I'll be discussing later due to its ties to Mad Father. Yet Aki discovers Misao's things. In the original game, it was her actual body parts, but the Steam version changed it to various items to tell you that foul play was definitely involved, rather than the obvious that she was murdered. I guess just to keep a little bit of suspense to figure out how Misao died. Ogre tells you that in order to go back to the real world, or human world, she'll need to find all of Misao's things and everyone who pissed off Misao needs to die in order for her curse to be lifted and for her soul to be set free. By the end of the game, you have two choices. Kill Kurata, who was the teacher who said he was the last person to see Misao alive, or Toma, who pretended to be in love with Misao for laughs. Regardless of your choice, we discover in the end it was the teacher, Kurata, who killed Misao as surprisingly unexpected as that is. Mostly because when I played this game for the very first time, I didn't think he was all that special or suspicious, but you know, you notice the foreshadowing as you play a few more times. Kurata has a hand fetish, and Misao came to him sobbing because she needed someone to talk to. Why? Oh boy. So. To loop back around, we need to talk about Misao's life first in order to find out how she died. Misao was friends with a boy named Kudo, but he was pretty quickly bullied for being friends with a girl because 
cooties, I guess. So he stopped being friends with her and he was jealous that she had a crush on Toma who's the heartbreaking playboy of the school. Yoshino is the main bully of the school and constantly picked on Misao for having a crush on Toma. He decides to play a prank and pretend to be Misao's girlfriend so he agrees to date her, only for him to be dating a girl on the side named Sao Tome the entire time. As time goes on, Misao writes a slightly cringe but well-meaning poem for Toma in a text that Sao Tome prints on the walls of the school. This enrages Yoshino who clearly has a major crush on Toma, but he doesn't feel the same at all because Playboy. Oh, but here's where it all comes together, folks. This is where we shift to some really dark shit. Yoshino grabs Misao and takes off all her clothes and starts forcibly taking pictures of her as she threatens to show pictures of her nude to the school so people think she's a quote, easy girl if she tells any of the teachers or parents that she's being bullied, then oh my gosh. Yoshino grabs a guy from the school and tells them to assault Misao, so she's assaulted in the bathroom. Look, all the other students in this game did some petty fucking shit like ignoring someone when they needed you or playing with someone's heart, but Yoshino is the absolute worst person in this game next to Kurata. And honestly, Yoshino deserved what happened to her. And maybe I'm being a little drastic there, but I just don't harbor a lot of sympathy for a character like Yoshino. There's nothing in any backstory that could justify or redeem basically asking a person to assault an innocent human being who did nothing wrong and then laugh about it like it's a joke. She's just an absolutely horrible person in my eyes. Next to Kurata anyway, because he's clearly number one, because, you know, he murdered Misao. As Misao is crying and unable to move due to the pain of the assault she just went through, Kurata comes in to see Misao on the ground sobbing and scolds her for still being in school so late. That's when she has a mental breakdown and confides in Kurata about everything that's happened. Yet Kurata is fucking gross and instead starts getting a little too touchy with Misao because he thinks she has beautiful hands which starts freaking her out. She tries to get him off of her, but she is then assaulted and tries to scream out for help, but this time, Kurata gets enraged that he's been rejected again, so he kills Misao and buried her behind the school. Fun fact, in the free version, he flushes her down a toilet, which makes no logical sense, but whatever, the free version is a little silly if I'm being honest. While everything else in this world is metaphorical, he did legit keep Misao's hands after he killed her because her body managed to remain fresh due to her soul now filled with burning hatred and rage for everyone, so he kinda kept them in his desk. Gee folks, who does that sound like? If you kill Toma, you get the bad ending where Kurata kills Aki for knowing his secret and continues to try and groom the students and then kill them when they aren't interested in his advances. I know the game doesn't confirm that Misao is his only victim, but the fact that he had a knife on hand get it? tells me that he at least had done this before with other girls. Just saying. If you killed Kurata, Toma and Aki get to see that Misao is at peace now and carry on with their lives. Aki even finds Misao's body behind the school in the real world to finally tell her that she found her. So it's a happy ending! Maybe. That's right guys, there's more. We move to part 2 of Misao called Truth, essentially an epilogue for the story of Misao. Aki wakes up in Ogre's dimension that we see from Mad Father, and he tells Aki that Misao has gone a little too far on her wish, so he wants the souls to be set free and he needs Aki to do it, and when the souls are set free, everyone who died can now be finally reincarnated. What I do like is that redeeming Kurata is optional, mostly because I'm not exactly someone who thinks a killer like Kurata is someone that should be redeemed, so I like that it isn't forced on you to be like, oh who cares that he assaulted and murdered a teenage girl, he was a sad boy in an ugly barnacle. Like, really glad for that. Unlike the others, he isn't reincarnated normally by the way. Long story short, he was still super evil that he lost his human rights, so he got reincarnated into a cat instead. I'd explain it further, but it's long and Buddhist stuff and kinda goes on a tangent, so I don't want that to go on. You guys can say all of this in the comments, by the way. But anyway. 
Aki then goes to confront Misao, who's trying to keep Toma with her forever. But Ogre gives her a mirror where she shows Misao how ugly she looks because of her hatred and spite. Basically, it's showing that she's only repeating the cycle of hatred that got her killed in the first place. That's kind of what I like about the story. It shows how bullying affects a lot of people. While Yoshino's torture is deserved and Kurata doesn't deserve a redemption at all, I do like that it does attempt to show the full spectrum of bullying and how badly it hurts people. From ignoring a friend who needs you to someone who needs to go to prison, it shows everything about bullying. Well, Misao realizes that she went too far and cries because she doesn't want to be alone in the afterlife, but Aki promises to always be her friend and it truly sets her soul at ease this time. Aki wakes up in the real world again to see thank you written on the chalkboard and promising to never forget that experience. Whether that includes PTSD or not is up to you. The end! Now, those of you who only played the free version, there is some differences in the story, but it's mostly tweaks and fixes that makes things more logical instead of weird leaps and strange choices in things. For those of you also wondering, you can play as a boy. He's a male version of Aki and his name is Akito. The story is exactly the same, just the art is going to be a little different. I'd say there's a romantic feeling to it, except it clearly shows and promotes Kudo and Misao being a thing, so... Fun fact, by the way, originally you could not get the true end as Akito in older versions of Misao, so that's probably why you don't see a lot of people playing him in the older versions. In newer versions and the Steam version, you can, so... There's some other miscellaneous things in the story as well, but those are lore-filled breadcrumbs that I think are better if people find them for themselves. Overall, I really love the story. Despite how much I spoke here, the story is actually surprisingly quick-paced, but it isn't really whiplash, though it is a little hammy. Honestly, the story reminds me a lot of I Know What You Did Last Summer, mixed with another famous RPG horror maker game called Corpse Party, if anyone's familiar with that. I really do love it though, it's just a classic story, and I do think the topic of bullying is interesting. Normally stories about bullying and how it affects us is usually tied down to those Hallmark movies and PSA commercials, so I think a horror game based on it is actually pretty interesting. And plus the horror here is the abuse it causes. It's psychological, and boy, do I love me some stories with major psychology. This is where I'll always be a little mixed on it. This game is a puzzle game, so you go around the school solving various puzzles, which can be a little tricky to figure out. I've played just about every update this game has, and I still struggle a bit with the puzzles of this game. I don't know if it's because I'm dumb, and I kind of feel like some puzzles are what I call point and click syndrome, where the solution is something really insignificant you wouldn't really think about, like an empty pot in library's room. The puzzles can be solved in any order you want, too. There's not entirely a certain order of obtaining certain objects of Misao's, and I like that. It makes the game feel very fluid and not like you're following a script. I mean, you are, but it has the illusion of organic gameplay, and I like that. On the other hand, this gameplay can be a little frustrating too. Not throw your keyboard at the wall and walk away screaming levels of frustration here, just that you feel a little irritated. A lot of the game is trial and error, and if you're playing it for the first time, you will die a lot. And sometimes for hilariously dumb reasons. However, I do like that they tried to balance the constant death by kind of making an achievement board, but overall, it's just a smidge annoying. I will say it's better than the free version, which is just a damn headache. One thing I will always praise this game for is the quick save, though be very careful with it. A quick save is not a permanent save. You need to talk to Ogre on either floor of the school in order to save the game. And be very smart and careful about your quick saves, because you could end up soft locking a death loop and you'll have to restart the game when you last saved. I would know because I did that once a while ago and it was not fun. Overall, the gameplay is pretty enjoyable and puzzles are pretty nice, but the constant death can be a little annoying. I will say that the scares in this game are actually pretty good and some parts definitely made me a little tense, which is good since, you know, a horror game's job is to make the player feel uneasy, uncomfortable, or straight up terrified. 
there's a lot of characters in Misao to go one by one with, like I normally do, so I'll just give a huge gist of them. All of these characters are kind of stereotypical high school anime tropes for the most part, with just some slight characteristics so they're not entirely a walking trope. Aki is the happy-go-lucky protagonist, Toma is the playboy delinquent, Kurata is Yoshikage Kira, and so on and so forth. It's not really a bad thing that the characters are a little one-dimensional. It does help to digest the story it's trying to tell a lot easier than if these characters were all very complex in such a short amount of time. While it is a large cast of characters, it's not overwhelming either. Everyone has memorable designs and is around long enough where you still remember them even if they're brought up in a conversation way later in the game or something. Though if I had to pick a favorite, it would be Aki and Kudo. I absolutely love how adorable she looks, and Kudo because I'm starting to notice I have a very weird thing for anime guys associated with green with a serious personality. Overall, the characters are really great. I liked most of them, except Yoshino and Kurata because fuck them both. Also, I don't know why, but Kurata's name used to be Sota in older versions. I'm not sure why the name changed, but I thought it was a fun tidbit to add. This game is a sequel to Mad Father. At the end of the first game, Aya's father was barely alive, so Ogre really liked Aya's dad and thought he was doing some cool stuff, so he brought him back to his world to continue his work. Eventually, Aya's father succeeded and recreated his daughter from a test tube, yet he is only allowed to call her Aya while the rest of the other world in the school and Ogre call her Library. If you name her Aya, she'll tell you that no one else is allowed to call her that, and if you name her Maria, it'll make her uncomfortable, but she's okay with it anyway. In Clone Aya's library, you'll discover Aya's original diary and a recreation of Aya's bedroom. It seems like library has Aya's memories, but only the ones her father wanted Aya to see. Though I still don't know if he plans to still turn his daughter into a doll, or if this clone of Aya is somehow immortal, thus achieving his goal of making his daughter immortal so she could never lose her, quote, purity. Aya's father is also the scientist that kills Yoshino, though it's pretty weird he's still going on, but he does say in his flashback in Mad Father that he does really love doing cruel experiments on people, so I guess that's why? He also might have made a clone of Akito, your gender-bent version in the game, and he has a room full of dolls still. The library theme is also the ending credits song for Mad Father, by the way. That's the connections to Mad Father. There's Ogre, of course, but basically his goal is to just let humans do really cruel things and he likes seeing people suffer. Though I guess not too much since he asked Aki to stop Misao from torturing people, so I guess he just kind of flip-flops? Who knows? I do hope that someday Sen explores this world further. I feel like there's a lot that can be explored with the universe he made here. I'd love to see a game based off the storybook in both games called The Red-Eyed Stranger. Fun fact, by the way, as I'm making this video, Mad Father was announced to have a remake sometime this October. So hopefully, if the game comes out before the end of October, I'll be able to do a quick review of that. If not, there's gonna be some delays. I do think this game is a classic, and everyone should try Misao at least once. Though I do prefer the Steam version, even though you have to pay for that one. The replay value for this game is pretty low since the only thing worth replaying is as Akito since his interactions are just a smidge different, but that's about it, unless you want to try and get every single death in this game. The game is about $5 on Steam or $9 if you want to use the Steam bundle where you can buy Madfather and Misao together since they're both connected. Though if you don't want to pay $5 and help support Sen, the free version is available on VG Person's website and will be linked down below. Though please remember that the free version does not have the updated graphics, animated sprites, artwork, scenes, and completely remade game design. Even though all that is not in the free version, it's still pretty good, though I would say the free version is just slightly more frustrating because there was some early game making mistakes that Sen made when he made Misao. I hope you all enjoyed the video though. You all have been requesting that I talk about Misao for a while, so what better time to talk about it than the month of October? Halloween! Be sure to let me know down below what you think and what other games you'd like to see me talk about next. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! And if any older new subs would like to help support the channel in any possible way, my Kofi page is down below in the description along with all of my social media. For any subscribers, new or old, who would like to help with video ideas or maybe just want to talk about anime or something, then I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!